Finally, the May books have to rot. Hey guys, welcome back. It's finally May and it's our favorite time of the month. Time to check what books are out there for book of the month picks. Don't forget that I have my monthly poll up right now for 24 hours. I have picked five out of the six selections from book of the month. Um, so you guys get to vote on which one I'm going to do a spoiler talk on. So be sure to head over there and vote for that. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss that spoiler talk. Okay, so we're just gonna go through and see what the picks are this month. Our first is a literary fiction, The Half Moon. It's a repeat author, Mary Beth Keen. I don't think I've read anything. I don't know if I've recognized her name. Um, okay, so this is a husband downy, dr downing. A husband drowning in debt and a wife grappling with infertility have their relationship tested during a winter storm. It's emotional marriage issue. Oh, a love triangle. Suburban drama. Anytime I think of like suburban drama, I just think of like Desperate Housewives. Oh my gosh. I feel like I was watching that show when I was like way too young to be watching that show. Um, so there's no like warnings for this one. Malcolm Gephardt. <laughs> handsome and gregarious law. <laughs> I don't know why. I thought it was gonna say handsome and gregarious longtime lover. <laughs> Malcolm's a very generous lover. So Malcolm is a handsome and gregarious longtime bartender at Half Moon. He's always dreamed of owning a bar. When his boss finally retires, Malcolm stretches to buy the place. He sees unquantifiable magic and potential in the Half Moon, hopes to transform it into a bigger success, but struggles to stay afloat. His smart and confident wife, Jess, has devoted herself to her law career. After years of trying for a baby, she's facing the idea that motherhood may not be in the cards for her. Like Malcolm, she feels her youth beginning to slip away and wonders how to reshape her future. It doesn't sound very exciting. Okay, so it only takes place over the course of one week. Malcolm learns shocking news about Jess. Let me guess, <laughs> from Love Triangle, is Jess cheating on you, Malcolm? That's my guess. I'm putting that down. That's my guess. A blizzard hits their town, trapping everyone in place. With a deft eye and generous spirit, um, they explore the disappointments and unexpected consolations of midlife, the many forms of forgiveness can take, the complicated intimacy of small town living, and what it means to be a family. 304 pages, nice and short, um, coming out May 2nd. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. That one doesn't sound... It's super exciting to me. Okay, so we had a literary fiction and now we are going to a contemporary fiction. Not sure if I understand like what the difference between those two things are. This is The Collected Regrets of Clover. It's a debut, good to know. Prepare to shed a couple of tears for this moving and inspirational story about a death doula learning not to fear living. Romance, inspirational road trip and New York City. No warnings. What's the point of giving someone a beautiful death if you can't give yourself a beautiful life? From the day she watched her kindergarten teacher drop dead during a dramatic re dramatic telling of Peter Rabbit. That's traumatizing. As a kindergartner? No. Oh, poor Clover. Clover Brooks has felt a stronger connection with the dying than she has with the living. After the beloved grandfather who raised her dies alone while she's traveling, Clover becomes a death doula in New York City, dedicating her life to ushering people peacefully through their end of life process. Clover spends so much time with the dying that she has no life of her own until the final wishes of a feisty woman send Clover on a trip across the country to uncover a forgotten love story. As she finds herself struggling Struggling to navigate the uncharted roads of romance and friendship, Clover is forced to examine what she really wants, whether she'll have the courage to go after it. Probing clever and hopeful, the collected regrets of T Clover turns the normally taboo subject of death into a reason to celebrate. Woo, 4.35. That has good ratings so far. Um, 320 pages comes out May 9th. I have not seen this like floating around. I 
knew nothing about this. On the other hand, I know all about Yours Truly, which is a romance pick for this month. Um, two doctors unlucky in love re realized romance may still be in the cards literally when they start writing to each other. So she's a repeat author. So her other book was featured last year. It was part of your world. I have read that. Her second romance novel is one of my all-time favorite books, um, but Book of the Month didn't start featuring her until Part of Your World, um, but my all-time favorite is the Happy Ever After playlist. I adore that book. It's one of my favorite romance novels. It's just, I love it. Her other ones, the first one, Life is, Sh or no, her first one in that series was fine, and then the third one, I, the one before Part of Your World, I could not even get through the first few like chapters because I thought it was so cringy. And then part of your world I thought was good. So I'm 100% going to read yours truly at some point. Um, if I don't know when you, if you guys are gonna pick it or not, but I'm at some point I'm going to read it on my own. So I do like her as an author a lot, but some of her stuff has been like really like either hit or miss for me. And her books can be read as standalones, um, but they do kind of have like connections with previous characters from previous books but it doesn't have a huge like impact. Like I, I read the second book before I read the first one and it didn't really affect my like experience at all. 400 plus pages. I don't know why it's 400 plus pages. I feel like that's way too long for a romance novel regardless. Um, it's quirky. I would agree her books are pretty quirky. Um, salacious, I would agree. And fake dating. I like fake dating tropes. The main character in this book was friends with the main character in a part of your world. So if you don't want anything ruined from part of your world and you haven't read that one yet, I suggest reading that one before you pick this one, if you're going to pick this one. A novel of terrible first impressions, hilarious second chances, and the joy in finding your perfect match. Dr. Brianna's life is seriously flatlining. Her divorce is just about finalized, her brother's running out of time to find a kidney donor, and that promotion she wants? Oh, that's probably going to go to the <laughs> new man doctor who's already registered 80 frickin' 7 on... <laughs> Sassy. Oh, that's probably going to the new man doctor who's already registering 80 friggin seven on Brianna's pain in my ass scale. All right, Brianna. But just when all systems are set to hate, Dr. Jacob Maddox completely flips the game by sending Brianna a letter. And it's a really good letter, like the kind that proves that Jacob isn't actually Satan. <laughs> Worse, he might be this fantastically funny and likable guy who's terrible at first impressions because suddenly he and Brie are exchanging letters, sharing lunch dates in her sob closet <laughs> and discussing the merits of freakishly tiny horses. But when Jacob decides to give Brianna the best gift in magic, okay, I feel like you're giving away way too much of this plot. A kidney for her brother. So that was from the the previous book. Um, so go Dr. Jacob, saving her brother. Um, a kidney for her brother. She wonders how she can resist this quietly sexy new doctor, especially when he calls in a favor she can't refuse. Okay. I feel like they totally just gave us like the entire synopsis for that entire book, which really irritates me. Whoa, 4.49. That's the other thing is like her books are pretty well loved. Like they, I feel like they usually do really well. By the way, I also have a spoiler talk for part of your world that I did last year. So if you are interested in watching that, I will link that below. So this is interesting. She's actually calling this part of your world number two, but I know from part of your world, um, the main love interest in that book was like cousins with the love interest from like the third book or something. They're all very loosely connected. Um, so it sounds like she's kind of like branching off into like a new series with this one or with those two. Regardless, where am I at? Okay, so also the other thing that bothers me, I have a lot to say about this book apparently. So this got released back on April 11th, which annoys me because it's like, that should have been an April pick then because it's like, okay, by the time you get this book from book of the month, it's gonna be a month old. That bothers me. Anyway, I'm excited to read this one. I will read this regardless regardless of whether or not you guys pick it for the poll winners. So you'll be able to see what I say about it in my month wrap up for May. So regardless. Another debut, a historical fiction 
that cover is beautiful. I love that. Um, I love this, how the silver book of the month tag like really like goes really well with like the pearls in the font. Ooh, that's, someone did a good job on that design cover. Did you hear about Kitty Carr? One woman's decision to pass as white reverberates through generations in this riveting exploration of race and fame. Another long one, 400 plus pages, movie-ish. I kind of like that, movie-ish. Uh, social issues and glamorous. Content warning, sexual assault, good to know. A multi-generational saga that traverses the Jim Crow South, the glamour of old Hollywood, and the seductive draw of present-day showbiz as secrets split a family tree into black, white, and something in between. Then white silver screen icon, Kitty Carr Tate. That's so cute. Kitty Carr Tate. That rolls off the tongue perfectly, dies and bequoths, bequoths her million dollar estate to the three black St. John sisters, it prompts questions. A celebrity in her own right, Elise St. John, would rather focus on sorting out Kitty's affairs than deal with the press. But what she discovers in one of Kitty's journals rocks her world harder than any other brewing scandal could. And between a cheating fiance and fallout from a controversial social media post, there are plenty. And if this isn't enough, her Vogue shoot has been complicated by the arrival of Jasper, a handsome and knowing photographer who may offer Elise a chance at her most authentic pose yet. Screw your cheating fiance, let's do Jasper. <laughs> Plan Kitty's memorial and figure out how she really feels under the harsh gaze of the paparazzi, the public. The discovery that her longtime, oh, neighbor and mentor was Oh, okay, so it's your neighbor that's having to take care of your estate. Mentor was her grandmother, a black woman who had been passing for white for over 60 years, threatens to expose a web of unexpected family ties, debts owed, and debatable crimes that could, with one pole, unravel the all-American fabric of her sisters and those closest to them. It was a long sentence. Did you hear about Kitty Carr? Is a sprawling tale that explores the celebrity machine, the burdens of being black, the privileges gained by fading to white, and the power that family secrets have to erode and complicate the lives of future generations. I really hope that there would be like flashbacks to like when she was like young and in Hollywood because I think that would be really fascinating. Okay, 410, 123 ratings. It's not super popular so far. 416 pages um, coming out May 2nd. Okay, a lot of like early May releases this month. Another one that I know. Okay, this is a thriller. Um, the Last Word by Taylor Adams, repeat author. I have not read anything by this author. While, so I think this one sounds actually really good. So while house sitting, Emma Carpenter starts encountering eerie things after posting a negative review of a horror novel. When I first read the description of this, I was like, that sounds so good. Okay, so it's a fast read, love that. Creepy, love that. Rugged and writer's life. Content warning of suicidal ideation. Okay, after posting a negative book review, a woman living in a remote location begins to wonder if the author is a little touchy or very, very dangerous in this pulse pounding novel of psychological suspense and terror. Emma Carpenter lives in isolation with her golden retriever. She's house sitting an old beachfront home on the rainy Washington coast. I'm getting so excited about this, I can't talk. Her only human contact is her old neighbor, Deke, and the house's owner, Jules. One day, she reads a poorly written but gruesome horror novel by the author H.G. Kane and posts a one-star review that drags her into an online argument with none other than the author himself. Soon after, disturbing incidents start to occur at night. To Emma, this can't just be a coincidence. It's strange enough for this author to bicker with her online about a lousy review. <laughs> I just love this premise as like a book reader. I don't like giving one star reviews because like I feel bad <laughs> and I feel like I all my lowest rating will always be two stars because I'm like, well, you wrote the book like you were put in the effort to write the book. I'm at least going to give you two stars um, to Emma. This just can't be a coincidence. It's strange enough for this author to bicker with her online about a rous lousy review. But could he be stalking her, too? As Emma digs into Kane's life and work, she learns he has published 16 other novels, all similarly sadistic tales of stalking and murder. But who is he? How did he find her? What's he capable of? Such good questions. Okay, 340 pages. April 25th, this is already out. I think this one sounds good. Okay, one more left, another literary fiction um, in another debut. 
Paper names. Singed by New York's melting pot, an immigrant family continues to fight movingly for a piece of the American dream. Multiple viewpoints, family drama, non-linear timeline, and immigration. An unexpected act of violence brings together a Chinese-American family and a wealthy white lawyer in this sweeping story of family identity in the American experience. Set in New York and China over three decades, wow, Paper Names explores what it means to be American from three different perspectives. There's Tony, a Chinese-born engineer turned Manhattan doorman who immigrated to the United States to give himself, his family, a better life. His daughter, Tammy, who we meet at age nine and follow through adult... Wow. Follow through adulthood. That's crazy. Um, she grapples with the expectations of first-generation American and her own personal desires. Finally, there's Oliver, a handsome white lawyer with a dark family secret who lives in the building where T Tony works. A violent attack causes their lives to intertwine in ways that will change them forever. Okay, 4.22, that's pretty good. Oh, it's a little guy, uh, 288 pages. Again, coming out May 2nd. What is up with these books that are all coming out like now? Okay, so let's pretend, this is not gonna be my book, but we have to do that to see our add-ons. Let's see if there's anything good for add-ons this month. Um, oh, okay, Christina Lauren's The True Love Experiment. That key, that comes out later this month. I think I actually have that coming from a different book box. Oh, okay, No Exit, that's Taylor Adams' like first release, I think. Clemenestra, that's new. Okay, so that is it for the May selections. So since the poll only lets me pick five, I'm going to be picking five out of those six. And so you guys will be able to vote on which book I'm going to read for May and do a spoiler talk on. So thanks so much for spending your time with me today. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>